بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حديث number 160 is still regarding the issue of washing the deceased so how to wash people who had died last time we met we've explained it briefly but i hope inshallah thoroughly in a fashion that would give you enough knowledge on how to do it if this was going to happen to any of your friends or loved ones and you were invited to participate and i do advise you to participate whenever you can because this softens the heart. Unfortunately, we do not see, well, I don't know if it's fortunately or unfortunately, but this is a fact. We do not see a lot of deaths. We are not exposed to a lot of deaths. And death is inevitable. One would say, may Allah make it far and away from us. How far? All those you know are going to die. And you yourself, you're going to die as well. So it adds a lot of value for you to learn how rotten, how cheap this life is. And this is manifested mostly when you wash a dead person. Once you see that this man who was full of life and power and energy, all of a sudden the power is turned off and he's dead. So while you're washing him, this gives you a big experience, it softens your heart. When you go out and return to your home, you start to realize that this life is only a transit. You're not here to stay. You have to remember this. You are not in this life to stay. And therefore, we should focus and we should try to wash dead people whenever it is possible for the experience and for softening our hearts. Hadith number 160. Narrated by Ibn Abbas, an, while a man was standing in Arafah, he fell off his camel and was killed. So the Prophet وسلم, said, wash him with water and sidr and shroud him in two pieces of cloth and neither perfume him nor cover his head. For Allah will resurrect him on the day of resurrection and he will be saying, Labbaik. In another narration, don't cover his head or his face. Now, this hadith is referring to an incident that had taken place at the time of the Prophet والسلام, where a man in Hajj or in Umrah wearing the clothes of Ihram. It so happened that he fell off his camel and broke his neck and died. And it's, it's very funny. What are the odds of you horse riding or driving your bike like a lot of the people do and having fun and go maybe dirt biking and do a wheelie on one wheel and jump two, three meters in the air or riding a camel or riding an elephant. When you do this, do you think that it's a possibility that you're gonna fall and die? Never. Never. Me die? Doing this? This is silly. Yet this man in Hajj, simple. This is like riding a car. He does this every day, riding the camel. He simply fell down, broke his neck. He's dead. Do you think that he was hoping to go back to Medina, to his family and to his children? Yes. Do you think that he has money to give to people and money to take from people as loans. Yes, he has lots of obligations, but it was over. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, wash him with water and lot tree or lotus. So we wash him like 
all the dead, as we mentioned last time. Yet the Prophet said, do not perfume him. So, a man who dies in the state of Ihram cannot be perfumed. Why? Because he's still in the state of Ihram. Not only that, he should not be shrouded in three pieces, as we've stated. He should be shrouded in only two, which are the clothes that he's wearing. The muhrim, how many pieces is he wearing? So these are the two that he must be shrouded in. Yet the Prophet said, والسلام, and beware, do not cover his head. And another narration, do not cover his face. Why? Because a muhrim is not allowed to cover his head. Is that true? It is not permissible for a muhrim to cover his head, but he may carry an umbrella. And the funny thing is that in Hajj, we have deviant sects that when they perform Hajj, they do it in, in buses without any roofs on top. It is so funny to see them going in Hajj in their masses in buses without any roof. And the sun is so hot. Why are you doing this? He said, yes, because the muhrim is not entitled to cover his head. This is not covering your head. The Prophet ﷺ, in the authentic hadith, spent the day of Arafah in a tent in the very beginning. So do you sleep in a tent? Do you sleep in a house? Or do you sleep in the open? He said, no, we sleep in a house and in a tent. Okay, what about traveling in a bus? It's only just showing off. It shows you how smart people some people are when they are not following the sunnah. Anyhow, so the Prophet told them, do not cover his head. And in another narration, nor his face. Why? Look at the justification. Because on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, he will be resurrected as a mulabbi. What is meaning of mulabbi? He's the person who says, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ So a pilgrim or a man in the state of Ihram, he is the one who's always repeating these words. Meaning that I am coming to you, O Allah. I am answering your call, O Allah. Every grace and every praise is due to you, Allah. So on the Day of Judgment, people would see him and know that he died while performing Umrah or Hajj in the state of Ihram. And this is how people will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet tells us that the martyr, والسلام, the martyr will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment with his blood, with his wound bleeding. Yet the color is red, the color of blood, but the smell is the smell of musk. And the Prophet والسلام, told us that those who break their promises and those who cheat and deceive others will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment with a flag coming next to their backside. And this flag shows that this is a person who deceives and cheats and lies. So everyone will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment with the good deeds or the bad deeds showing on him. Remember the Mu'addin, those who call for the Salat, they'll be resurrected with the longest necks. So people would identify them that these are the people who used to call for prayer. What a beautiful and noble profession. And likewise, this person who died in the state of Ihram. Now, having said that, one would may ask and say, is this the only person to be shrouded in his two clothes, set of clothes? And the answer is no. We know that there are certain people, when they die, we cannot wash them. And we cannot shroud them with different types of clothes. And they are to be buried in their own clothes. And those are the martyrs. But who are the martyrs? Because we have a hadith where the Prophet tells us alayhi salatu wasalam, those who die protecting their lives 
their families, their religion, or their wealth, they are martyrs. Those who die when a building falls on them, or when, who die in a fire, or those who die drowning, they are martyrs. Those who die with an illness in their stomachs, so like uh, liver cancer, or may Allah protect us all, or any cancer in your intestines. Those who die with an illness that causes internal bleeding or a tumor. Those who die while in labor, women who die in labor, the Prophet also told us that they are what? Martyrs. So are we to treat them as we treat those who die in the cause of Allah and in the battlefield? This is what we will find after the break. So stay. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So who are to be treated as a martyr when it comes to funeral rites? Scholars agree that it's only the person who dies while fighting the enemies, who dies in the battlefield. But others are rewarded like a martyr, but are treated as normal people in the sense that they're washed, they're shrouded, they're prayed upon funeral prayer and they're buried. While the martyrs who die in battlefield, they are not washed, they're shrouded in their own clothes and funeral prayer is not performed on them because they do not need people to intercede for them. They intercede for others. So they are buried like this. However, who is considered to be a martyr that is treated in such a way? Scholars say it is those who die on the battlefield or because of the suffering of this wound. So if a person dies on the battlefield, he's a martyr. But if a person is injured and he is taken to hospital and he spends in hospital a couple of weeks where he eats and drinks and being treated and then dies of this wound, is he a martyr? He is not a martyr. The martyr is who dies directly due to this injury. And they say, if a person is capable of eating, not drinking, drinking is permissible. If a person drinks and then dies of his wound, he's a martyr. But if he eats, this means that his death was not directly caused by the injury. It is a cause, but he had the time to eat and maybe spend a day or two, an hour or two, yet he did not die in the battlefield due to direct cause of the injury. He's not considered to be a martyr in the sense that we wash him, we shroud him, we pray on him, and we bury him. But the reward, inshallah, is, is there. One does not say that, no, he will not get the reward. No, he will get the reward. But we do not treat him as a martyr as such. And from this hadith, we know that it is a great deal to die while offering good deeds. To die while you are in the state of ihram is extremely rewardable because this means that this was the last thing you have done. And you remember that the Prophet said that deeds are judged by their conclusion, which as in the hadith of Abdullah and Mas'ud, a man could do well as it appears to the people for 60 years. And just before he dies, he does something bad that makes him enter hell and he's among the people of hell. And another man may do bad things and bad sins for 60 years. And just before he dies, Allah guides him to do something well and he dies doing that and he goes to paradise. So it is extremely important to know that deeds are by their conclusions. They are judged by what is the last and final of them. This man died while he is a muhrim. Likewise, if a person travels 
long distances to acquire knowledge, to learn the deen. And he dies, then also he will be among those who will be resurrected and his reward would be continuous until the day of judgment. One thing that we're supposed to mention, those who we would like to bury, but it is not enough for them to be covered in their clothes. What to do? The Prophet ﷺ, on the battle of Uhud, when Mus'ab ibn Umair and Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib died, they tried to shroud them and cover their bodies with their clothes, but it was not sufficient. So what did the Prophet order them to do? They put leaves of trees to cover the areas because whenever they covered the head the feet would be exposed and whenever they covered the feet the head would be exposed so they covered the feet with uh, leaves of trees and this is when we cannot cover the body properly do we have any questions uh, before going on yes the brother on top Assalamualaikum Sheikh Assalamualaikum Sheikh, as we know through history, Umar Zayalanu, he was assassinated in the Fajr prayer. So, after a few days he died because of the wound. So, will he be considered as a person who died on battlefield and will his reward or his virtue be as the one who is Shaheed? What do you think, brothers? Faisal. Once the Prophet وسلم, with Umar Radiallahun, Abu Bakr Siddiq Radiallahun and Usman Radiallahun, they were on a mountain. And the Prophet said that on this there is a Nabi, a Siddiq and two Shaheed. So from this we come to know that Prophet had given him the glad tidings of being a martyr. So what his death was a death of a martyr. Okay, then this hadith shows that they were, Umar was a Shaheed. However, my question to you, was he washed and shrouded and prayed upon or was he buried in his clothes? Anyone? Yes. He was shrouded and prayed upon. Which means that he was not treated as a shaheed. Why? Because I clearly pointed out that the shaheed who is not washed and shrouded and prayed upon is the one who dies on the battlefield. Now, being shaheed means that he was assassinated and he will get the reward of a shaheed like the one who dies in fire or the one who dies if the house collapses upon him but he would not be treated as a shaheed in the sense that he would not be washed no we wash him we shroud him and we offer funeral prayer any more questions yes brother assalamu alaikum salam is ghusl recommended for the person who performed ghusl on the deceased that's a good question at the beginning it was mandatory the Prophet said والسلام, whoever washes a deceased person must perform ghusl and whoever carries a funeral must perform wudu. But then this was abrogated later on and it is not mandatory. It is recommended but not mandatory. If you don't do it, you don't have to do it. And if you carry a funeral, you don't have to perform wudu again. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Salam. If an infant or a child who has not attained puberty dies, what is the procedure to bury him? The funeral procedure for a child, an infant, or a child who did not reach the age of puberty is exactly the same. He is to be washed, he is to be shrouded, he is to be preyed upon, and he is to be buried. However, scholars say that if the child, girl or boy, were below the age of seven years of age then it is permissible for men to wash a girl and it is permissible for women to wash a boy because they say that below seven years of age they do not have aura so it is okay for men to wash a girl who is five years old six years old and it's okay for women to wash a boy who is five or six years of age though it's recommended that we keep on the segregation but they say that below seven there is no aura that is respected such children 
in normal cases do not stir any desire or lust. Unfortunately, nowadays, this might be different because people's souls are corrupt. And we know about child molesters and, and these sick perverts who may have these ideas. Therefore, it's best to segregate. But scholars say that if a man wanted to wash his daughter, who is five years or six years of age, this is permissible and there's nothing uh, wrong in that. Yes, brother. I have seen cases that some people do not cook non-vegetarian when the person dies. In their houses, they don't cook non-vegetarian for 40 days. Please uh, clarify that. This is all not part of the sunnah. Whenever we see any practice and we do not know whether it's permissible or not, we ask, is this backed by the Quran or sunnah? If they say no, then we know that it is part of the innovation. Why don't you cook meat in your house for 40 days? Likewise, if someone says, after 40 days of the death of our loved ones, we would like to commemorate his death by throwing a lunch or a dinner and inviting our relatives. We say this is bid'ah. He says, why? Simple. The Prophet did not do it. And this is coming from the pharaohs. They commemorate their dead on the 40th day because they think that when the pharaoh dies and they bury him in his pyramids they usually put treasures and food and horses because they believe that on the 40th day he will be resurrected so they commemorate their deceased on the 40th day unfortunately muslims nowadays do the same and not only that they also commemorate their dead after one year and maybe they would have a five year or a ten year. What is this? I'm going to spend my life remembering those who died. This is not part of the sunnah. It is an innovation, a clear innovation that we should be far away from. Sheikh, do we have any special day or special night where we are advised to go to the graveyard? Because we have one day here which is celebrated as Shabe Barat, wherein it is said that it is a night of the death and we should go to the, and usually people go and visit the graveyard how far it's true this is not true this is an innovation there is no special day to visit or special time to visit the graves it's an open topic or an open date but if you relate it to something this becomes an innovation so if you relate visiting the dead on Fridays and you say that this is good or you relate it to Eid and say that every Eid I have to go and visit my grandfather or my uncle or you relate it to Laylat al-Isra wal miraj or to the middle of Sha'ban all of this is considered to be innovations and it is not permissible for you to do this is all the time we have until we meet next time fi amanillah wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh